Remember, back in 2017, when an ICT company announced that it was now a blockchain company, making its share price jump as much as 380%. Are we at it again? Hi, I'm Alex Medavoy, founder and CEO of Altexsoft. And as you have guessed, we're going to talk about AI and Gen AI in travel. Is the current AI rush the real deal? Or is it a rapidly inflating bubble that's about to burst? In 2023, despite the overall venture funding slowdown, down by 70%, as I mentioned in this video, the sector that did grow was AI. In 2023, startups here raised about $50 billion. Significant investments went to OpenAI, to Anthropic, and Inflection AI. The businesses rolling out large language models. But most of the money went to other startups with these two wonderful letters in their descriptions. And this is where I'm starting to have lots of questions. How do we define AI? What does it mean to have an AI product? And what is going on with AI in travel? Let's find out. The problem with AI is that people have misconceptions about what it really is. Some startups try to board this hype train without a ticket. They claim that they have AI under the hood and publish these recognizably vague marketing materials, which leave you wondering, how exactly are you employing AI guys? What do you predict with AI? And what's the use case? A conventional understanding of AI is that it's a product that employs machine learning to solve problems. The difference between machine learning and regular programming is that with programming, you explicitly define specific rules for how your system works and write this logic in code. With machine learning, you train a model to recognize patterns in existing data to make predictions about new data. Let's be clear. Machine learning is more complex. It's harder to predict whether your model will work. It's never going to be 100% accurate, and it's harder to calculate ROI before you train and test the model. On the plus side, it can do more sophisticated tasks, like recognizing puppies in pictures. No conventional coding can help you with this mission. Jokes aside, AI solves problems that algorithmic programming cannot solve. From, yes, recognizing puppies to predicting flight fares based on market indicators. Unfortunately, sometimes you see these quote-unquote AI startups. You know what they're doing, realize that they have no use case for machine learning and push a square AI pack into a round hole to get your attention. Well, I'm not going to point fingers, but my recommendation to fellow investors is to look into these AI claims and determine whether there is a real case of AI or it's just grifting. Another misconception is that AI means large language models only. AI research started in 1960s, and we've seen active adoption of machine learning applications beginning in the late 2000s. From the Netflix recommender system to Google Voice search to flight price prediction, which both Hopper and our company worked on, these are all real examples of AI. When ChatGPT became publicly available in 2022, Many people, oblivious to the whole AI history, started thinking that AI looks like a chat and speaks to you. AI is more than that. There are hundreds of algorithms besides LLM's transformers. They are trained on data and can predict something when they receive new data. So keep that in mind. Okay, with the misconceptions out of the way, 
Let's discuss AI products and how artificial intelligence finds its use in the travel industry. There are two main types of AI-driven products in travel. The first group includes applications built around existing large language models, such as ChatGPT, Llama, Claude, and Gemini. All these services offer APIs, and startups develop their interfaces and logic on top of them. Let's call this group LLM wrappers, as they wrap their products around existing LLMs. Another type is those who develop internal AI. They collect data and train their proprietary models. Let's discuss these two types and start with LLM wrappers. Since LLMs belong to conversational AI, most cases here fall into either trip planning or guest experience. An example of such a trip planning product is MindTrip AI. It's a tool that allows travelers to upload a travel-related blog post or video. Based on the activities and locations mentioned, MindTrip AI suggests an itinerary using the ChatGPT API under the hood. In 2023, the startup raised $7 million in seed funding. Dove and Enzo, on the other hand, are guest experience platforms. They both integrate ChatGPT to power guest communications, such as making personalized offers, sorting requests, and giving some local travel tips. They aren't built solely around LLMs and have a broader set of offers, but guest communication features do rely on ChatGPT. Dove raised 21.7 million and Enso raised about 1.8 million dollars. Okay, what's the good and the bad about making LLM wrappers? The good is that it's a relatively fast integration and setup. You plug in the API, configure the prompts, build the front end, and launch. The time to market is incredible. We did have experience with ChatGPT integration to allow for natural language search across tour packages. So travelers could type, hey, I'm looking for tours with scuba diving, and it would automatically choose the packages that fit this description. If you want to learn more, check the link below. But can an LLM wrapper build a competitive advantage for your business? The traditional Porter's framework for competitive strategies says that there are two main ways to achieve competitive advantage. A low price or a unique product that differentiates you from the rest of the market. The extra two strategies suggest that you're offering either lower prices or better differentiation in specific niche markets. Let's talk about differentiation. The value of differentiation is that it's hard to reproduce. For instance, you have unique technology or access to specific partnerships, scarce engineering talent or market penetration, something other businesses have no access to and will have a hard time reproducing. It has always been this way, long before AI. And here is the problem with the LLM wrappers. You can achieve unique value with the logic you build on top of the existing API. You can compose prompts that work precisely for your task. You can create a fantastic interface, but it won't be one of a kind for a long time. Once you engineer it and release it to the public, other businesses, especially enterprises, can reproduce the results relatively fast, as can other startups. So what used to be a unique value becomes an industry standard that everybody has or must implement now. All trip planners will employ LLMs. All guest experience platforms will provide personalized offers based on previous conversations and interactions with the platform. And all booking websites will have a chatbot to search for flights or accommodations. 
that's what is happening right now. Generative conversational AI is now becoming a commodity and it will eventually be a necessity for every business. The viable path for an LLM wrapper here is not to build the competitive advantage around the AI itself, but around some other scarce value. For instance, your guest experience platform may rapidly integrate with hundreds of property management systems to achieve deep market penetration. You can now expect enterprises to buy the technology from you rather than buy it from your competitors or build it internally. Perhaps the primary reason that it's hard to build a competitive advantage based on an LLM API is the lack of the network effect. What's that and why don't LLM wrappers have it? The network effect is phenomenon on which some products become more valuable as they attract more customers. The simplest example is social media. The more people join it, the more sense it makes to spend time there as you get more content, connections, and communication. AI products are especially open to the network effect. You start with a limited amount of data, train a model, gain some customers. As they use your product, they generate more data. You improve your data set, retrain the model, and it starts making more precise predictions, adding more value. For example, you're releasing a tool that builds personalized tours for your customers. Travelers give you some initial input, such as their destinations, basic preferences, group composition, and budget. The tool suggests five options for activities. The traveler chooses one and discards the rest. But as they enjoy the experience and invite friends, you manage to grow your user base. These new people also share their preferences, budgets, group compositions, etc. Over time, you accumulate more data, retrain the model, and it gets better at recognizing patterns in destinations, different types of travel profiles and preferences. The more people you engage with more data they share with you, the more data you have, the better recommendations you give and the more valuable your product gets. Eventually, your product gets better as more people use it. This is the definition of the network effect. Now, an average traveler chooses three activities out of five, which earns you more commissions. And that's precisely what you can't do with LLM APIs. You don't own the model. You may own some data, but the product that enjoys the network effect and gets better is ChatGPT. And it gets better for everyone, for you and your competitors. So what about reaping the benefits of the network effect and owning the model? Let's now talk about travel companies that build their proprietary internal AI products. The most prominent use case of proprietary AI in the travel industry is revenue management. The challenge for revenue management is easy to articulate but hard to solve. Where and at what price should I sell my hotel room or flight ticket? There are so many variables to consider when answering these questions. What's the current demand? What are competitor prices? What's the season, day of the week, weather, events at destinations? Not only do you have to answer those questions, you have to do it every day every hour and dynamically change prices. You can do that manually or use more straightforward statistics, but machine learning is the only way to consider many variables and achieve precise results. That's why many startups enter the revenue management scene with their AI products. Flyer, focusing on airline and hotel revenue management, acquired over 500 million in funding. They partner with JetBlue on the airline side, 
with the Oracle's Opera property management system on the hospitality side. Dueta, another hotel revenue management startup, employs AI to analyze the hotel market and predict optimal prices. It received over 143 million in funding and integrates with Oracle and Moose property management systems. Fletcher, an AI-based airline revenue management system, acquired over $114 million in funding and partners with Virgin Atlantic. They all claim to employ and develop internal models. We haven't invested in them. We don't really know what's under the hood, but let's trust these claims for the sake of the argument. Shall we? These are similar startups do have a real competitive advantage in their AI products. Why so? The main asset that makes your AI competitive is not the algorithm itself. The research on algorithms and their architecture is usually publicly available. The real value is data. Not any data, but unique data and scarce data sets. Not the ones that are open source and downloadable in Kaggle. If you have unique data on flights, hotels, or customer behavior, you have insights that nobody else has access to. Your model can use those insights during training to deliver unique differentiating value. But how do you get this data? You should either be very well funded from the get-go and buy it, or seek partnerships among players who do have access to this data. That's what Flyer, Fletcher, and Dueta do as they partner with airlines and hotel management systems. This access to proprietary pricing and market data, combined with a strong feedback loop with new data from these players, enables the network effect I mentioned. To sum up, what questions should you ask as an investor when considering an AI startup in travel? Do they really have AI? Sadly, I have to mention that. Is it an LLM wrapper? If so, what's their competitive advantage? Is it built around the third-party LLM API? Then how easy is it to reproduce what they're doing? Regarding LLM wrappers, I would try to find a competitive advantage that doesn't merely depend on LLM. For example, they may have many partnerships or other products or features, while AI is just a value-added service. Do they own the data and proprietary model? If the answer is yes, you may be onto something interesting. Is this data unique and scarce? The real differentiation starts here. Finally, can this product harness the network effect? Will it get better with more people using it? Does the team have the infrastructure and resources to enable a constant feedback loop by collecting new data and regularly retraining the model? If the answers are all yes, congrats! Eventually, the AI hype will recede will reach, as Gardner puts it, the plateau of productivity. We will know the technology's strengths and weaknesses and have a sober view of it. But those investors who capitalize on unique data and network effects will see substantial returns. Look, I know that not all of you will agree with me, but I hope it was helpful. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below and see you next time.